everybody, welcome back. Uh, today's pretty exciting. I picked myself up a Porter Cable floor drill press. Um, we're going to put it together today. No idea what, how long it's going to take us to do. Um, I've never put one of these together before. Uh, I believe the model on this is PCB660 D and P. So we are going to put this thing together. Let's have some fun. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do, obviously, is figure out where in your shop you want to place this thing. Now, I haven't done a tour of my shop that I built um, as of yet. That will be coming very soon. If not the next video, one of the next videos after that. <laughs> so anyways, um, everything I've done in this shop, I had to build from the ground up. Um, my, me and my dad, we knocked this thing out. Took us about half a year uh, working, uh, probably about once a week, twice a week, four hours a day during those times. So it took us a while to build, but uh, we finally got it done, uh, you know, just based on work, kids schedule, and you know, family time. So we finally got it done, knocked out. Again, I'll do a whole tour of what I did in order to build this shop. Um, I was not fortunate enough to have a garage with my house, so I needed to build something in order for me to work out of, and that's what we did. So um, we're gonna try to figure out where we're gonna put this Porter Cable um, drill press here, or any model that you buy, you want to figure out exactly where you're gonna place it. So I rearranged my tools quite a few times, uh, just figuring, you know, more, more convenient for myself, where I want things uh, placed. Table saw obviously is the main tool in your shop, so that needs to be in its own designated area. And that's basically what I did here. Um, so as I move tools around, I figured I want my drill press here. Reason I put the piping here for the dust collecting system, I have this one here hooked up in order to attach probably a, a later on a disc sander or another tool of some sort right there, maybe even a jointer. I haven't figured out what I want to do yet with that. So as you were looking around the shop, I figured that this is where I want to put my drill press. Plenty of room, it's not going to be in the way, and I can only imagine it being about this wide. So unfortunately, this brand itself, and I'm not sure which, uh, there's, I think there's only a few, I may be wrong, but there's a few, um, drill press models that do have dust collector dust collecting capability um, however this one does not so even though i have this here for the dust collecting system i will eventually have to figure out how to uh, attach the hose to this portion and angle it in a certain way to where the dust that's coming off the drill press will end up going through this pipe we will figure that out later on for the time being let's go ahead and get this installed um, Again, this is where it is going to be placed. All right, so this box itself, well, not the box itself, but the tool inside is very heavy. Um, it's recommended at least, about the ground shake on that one, for two people at least to be able to move this thing. Um, I managed to get it through with the dolly, um, no issue at all. Um, so, just giving you a heads up, it's a lot easier to go around with two people. So, anyways, just like anything, we're going to start. We need to get this thing open. So, during this whole process, we're going to figure out what tools we need to use um, and what's required in order to get this thing put up. So, obviously, utility knife, razor blade, straight blade, whatever you want to call it. We are going to open this package up and see what's inside. things first. We're going to go ahead and place all the parts on the ground. This is how I like to install things. Um, everybody has their own preference. Some people like to take things one at a time. Um, I like to place everything on the ground spread out so that I know exactly 
what I have in the package. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on that. I don't wanna bore you with me taking things out of the box, so I'll get everything out of the box, spread it out, and then we'll see what we have. All right, so we got everything out of the package. Um, one thing I noticed was the instruction manual, which I did not know, I thought it wasn't in there. It was actually taped to one of the, uh, the flaps of the cardboard box inside. So make sure that when you take everything out of the packaging, you're not throwing that box away without getting your instruction manual. So um, again, this, uh, all, the, all the pieces are out here. The heaviest portion that I figured, uh, found out was the actual the head of the beast itself. That's where all the weight is at. It's not so much these poles, these poles are not that heavy. Um, they're durable. You could tell they're, I mean, they're very durable, but that's not the heavy portion of the, the actual item itself. It's the head model. So if you're taking this out of the box, make sure that you have somebody helping you uh, remove that. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. See what time it is. Now we have an idea of how long this thing's gonna take us to put together in case you're ever wondering a day after work. Um, it is currently 624 right now. So we are going to get this thing started and see where we end up and how long it takes us to do. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out exactly where we wanna put the base. Um, make sure it's at least on a somewhat level surface. Um, you don't want this thing tilting on you at all. Um, I do want to put it somewhat offset to my dust port here. Um, and what this calls for, the first step is putting this column onto this base. Um, keep in mind that the packaging has a lot of packaging grease. The tools have, um, the item has packaging grease on it. Um, your hands are going to get pretty, pretty nasty, pretty uh, slippery and, and shiny. I don't know, maybe you can tell your wife that you got a pedicure or something or a manicure. I guess that's what they're called, manicures for hands. Um, but in the meantime, let's go ahead and put this thing up. And what you want to pay attention to is the teeth of this column itself. I think I don't even know what they're calling this, but the teeth of it. And that's where the uh, table lifts and locks into place. You want to make sure that that is somewhat offset to the right back. Um, there's four holes on the base to line the column up with. And once you have that, those lined up, you're gonna know where the teeth are gonna be facing. You don't want the teeth any other direction. Um, it's meant to go somewhat set to the right in a diagonal way. Um, so let's go ahead and put the, uh, the bolts on. There's four bolts that it comes with. It does not come with the socket set. Uh, so you need to have your own. I don't, at least I don't believe it comes with one. Um, if I find one in the package later on, I'll, I'll tell you I found one. But at this time, I do not see one at all. It comes with some Allen wrenches, but not quite sure what those are for later on down the road. So let's go ahead and start uh, placing these holes, lining them up, and getting the bolt started. should be good. Alright, time to go to the next step. Alright, I went ahead and decided to put on some gloves and I'm going to explain the reason why. You're going to look at what's called the worm gear here. If you can see this worm gear, you can already see how much packaging grease is loaded up on that. I get anything on, if I touch this with my bare hands, you can bet it's going to get over on everything else that you touch. Then we need our uh, our lever here. Um, I believe it's the uh, lock handle, the table lock handle. And we're going to need our table itself. This is the next step in the process, is grabbing the table. Now we are going to insert the worm gear into it. Let me 
again, this thing is full of packaging grease, so glove up. This thing needs to get, I need a rag. Let's see. All right, so we went ahead and I took off some of it. I didn't take off all of it. Um, I'm not quite sure if it's going to be needed for anything in the future to have a little bit of grease on there, but definitely wanted to take a little bit off. So the way we're positioning this is you get your worm gear and it almost looks like a router bit here, but this portion, um, the, the shaft of it is going to go inside this portion of the fence or the table, I'm sorry, and it's going to be pushed back. So that way you have this sticking out of the back side. Then we're going to get our lever and we're going to thread it. I don't want to crank it down too much, but it's in. It's not going to fall out now. And I believe if we're lucky enough, the next step is to place this onto the column. Let's find out. Okay, so I was wrong. The next step is not placing that on this. The next step is actually you having to turn this. Your pe the packaging comes with three uh, hex wrenches and the smallest one is your three millimeter. That's what they want you to use. All right, so we're gonna remove this ring rack right here with the uh, three millimeter hex wrench right here. Just give it a little twist. I don't think that's enough, but it was enough to loosen it. And I don't know if this thing has to come all the way out, but it feels like it does. Be very careful because that could happen. All right. Is there another one on the bottom? This is supposed to come off as well as the teeth. So make sure you put that little bolt in that wrench somewhere safe. Making sure there's not another place where the screw will go. So you're going to have to pop that up. There we go. I'm going to make sure that that stays in the upright position how it was already. And then that comes right off. So it's not the hardest thing in the world, but it doesn't feel like it's going to have any give at first. And just use a little bit of force to push it up and it'll pop right out, I guess. So, all right. I believe the next step is, hopefully, is putting that table on, um, but we'll find out. Okay, so the next step it has is actually um, attaching the teeth into the column portion of the table and making sure that this worm gear is going to grab onto the teeth before we put this in. So. I need to make some room on a table in order to get this thing up there. I'm not gonna do this on the ground level. All right. So again, careful with that little screw that we took out. You don't want to uh, lose that thing. All right. So we got this thing propped up on a table. Make sure it's on if you're gonna do it this way. Um, this thing is has some weight to it and if it falls backwards onto your foot, that would not be good. Um, so let's go ahead and see what they're asking for. So we're gonna install this. There's a kind of a little square slot here. And you can feel it just by pushing it like that. You can feel it, it grasps onto the worm drive. So, and yeah, there it goes. But just turning this up and down, you can see that it's moving. Sorry, not the worm drive, the worm gear. So, at least we know that that's gonna go on there. So I'm gonna put this on the very 
bottom portion of it at least for right now let's see what the next step is all right let's so let's see how this thing plays out here i'm going to go ahead and remove the packaging we are going to this is probably going to be very useful to have a second pair of hands here but Let's see how this thing goes on. So I'm holding the rack, the teeth, to the inner portion of this column opening. And I gotta put this thing on top of here. And then the bottom of this teeth rack has to rest on the black portion base of this column on the other side. So hopefully I don't pinch my fingers at the time of doing this. Um, but again, I guess we'll find out. So you want this on. Teeth in and the worm gear oh, yes, already came out. All right, there we go. So now I'm going to put this in. There we go. Okay, it wasn't that hard, but it's going to take some balancing on the right side to do this. So now we got to move this thing down so that the bottom portion of this teeth let me move the camera so you guys can see what i'm talking about here okay so we got to get this bottom portion back to touching the top portion of this base and once you get it to that lever that level you want to use this lever here and tighten it in so i'm going to move this out of the way a little bit more moving room here I'm gonna to try to shimmy it down see if it goes maybe I'll loosen this up a bit so you want to make sure it's perfectly straight up and down looks like it's it okay that wasn't so bad I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this lever here so that it doesn't move on us. I don't think it should, but just in case. All right, so at this point, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the ring rack. Um, there's no hole on the column for the the screw to go into. It's more mostly just a pressure screw. Make sure that you have the screw in the right direction. It'll thread either way, but on one side of the screw, there's no hole for the the, uh, the wrench, and on the other side there is. So we're gonna go ahead and get this thing positioned back on. Slide it back down, and I'm gonna let it rest right on the top of that teeth rack itself. And then we're gonna retighten or tighten this up again using the same three millimeter hex screw. I mean, the three millimeter uh, hex wrench, I'm sorry. And that should do it. Make sure it's nice and tight. You don't want to overdo it, but you don't want to strip that hole. I think that thing looks pretty, pretty even and level to me. All right, so the next step we're going to do is we're going to attach the head to this column. Now, what you want to pay attention to is the middle of your column itself and any obstructions behind. So what I have here from the wall, if you have any piping here or any tools, um, whatever the case is, a cabinet, you're going to want to make sure you have enough clearance for the motor um, and the head unit to rest on top. So, and that's pretty obvious, but I wouldn't want to bolt this thing into the ground initially and then realize that you have to move it. So, what this, what I have here from the wall to the middle of my column is 
roughly 13 and a half inches. So that's what I have from the wall to there. And what the unit's calling for from the back side of the motor to the middle of the column is roughly 11, 11 inches. So I have plenty of, of space from the wall to the middle of my column here. 11 inches is right here. So the back side of the motor should be roughly this location. All right, so next step is lifting up this head. Obviously, motor goes to the back, switches go to the front. Recommend somebody else helping you out. Lift this up if you need it. There we go. All right, we're in. So again, there's my clearance that I was talking about. Plenty of room for this unit. So we have a screw here to tighten down. I'm gonna assume this is one to tighten down as well. And I do not see any on the back of the other side. So it looks like there's only two screws and we have some more wrenches here that were provided to us. Um, looks like possibly a five millimeter, let me see. Okay, so this is a, a five millimeter hex wrench here. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these down. I'm not gonna tighten, over tighten them because I wanna see if there's some way to make sure that this thing is completely level. Plumb with the table. Can you move? It can move. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and snug it up for right now until we figure out whether or not that is actually right on the money. I don't want it to go anywhere, but I don't know if that's going to be its permanent position. Looks good, but we'll find out. So the next portion that we're going to do is we're going to install the handles. Now, everybody has their own preference to this. Some people only use one, some people use two, and some people want all three on it. Just for the installation's sake, I'm going to put all three. However, in the future, I may decide on just leaving one, or two, or all three. I guess we'll find out. I can see why it will be an issue having all three on there. Um, if you have any sort of table that you're gonna be making for this, this thing's gonna definitely be in the way. So it's probably best just to have, I'm not gonna tell you what to do with your tools, but it's probably gonna be, for me, it's gonna be best just to have one, one handle right here. But for the installation's sake, I'm gonna go ahead and leave that on. All right, so there are three parts left from the packaging. I'm gonna place them right here. We have the chuck and the key that was in the white box. So, what you wanna do with this is if there's any packaging grease, you wanna make sure that you remove it. It says if there is any, it can cause the chuck to become loose. My rag is no longer near me, so... There wasn't much on the chuck itself. So this thing obviously needs to go into here. And we're gonna figure out exactly how that works. This thing feels very durable. I mean, this cast iron table, uh, it's definitely not cheap. 
You can tell. We just gotta see how it functions. All right, three pieces are removed from the packaging. Let's get started. All right, so I had to move the camera around, so excuse me for getting in the way if I, my arms move around this way. Um, however, I needed to show you this portion. Now, this is preset. I'm not sure where it was at exactly, but it was somewhere around the line of right under an inch. Um, probably about three quarters, right around there. Um, but what you need to do in this case is push this button and move this up out of the way. The reason you do that is because when we install this chuck, you need to be able to see this portion right here. I almost, I mean, we're gonna have to move this table a little bit to the, to the left or this to the right. So let's go ahead and adjust this a little bit to the left, just so I can have some clearance with the levers. So when you pull this down, you're gonna see this slot here. This slot is what you're going to be, oh, you, have, you have it on the other side as well. You're gonna be able to tell when you have the spindle and the shank go in, um, you're gonna be able to see them align. If you don't do that, I mean, you may be able to do it without looking at it, but that verifies that they did lock in together. So this is what we're gonna do. Here is the shank portion and your chuck. So it's gonna enter in here. And what you wanna do, what it calls for is you wanna get a rubber mallet and you wanna make sure that this goes into the chuck. And now that thing is nice and tight. They said you can use a hammer too um, now, this is an installation, might as well see if it works. I don't want to bang the crap out of this thing, but... I'm pretty sure we're in now. Hopefully that thing is tight. So again, what we're going to do is we need to get this to enter into that. So we're going to have to lower this table down. So I have enough clearance here, and you can feel, you can feel it when you push it in and you turn it. You can see how it went up. Then what we're going to do is we're going to pull these levers down here. We're going to verify. So it's explaining to do it this way. What we're gonna wanna do is hit this upward. I'm assuming that's the locking it portion. That is not pulling down now. So I guess that's the right way to do it. There it is. That thing is now locked in there. All right. All right, for, so for the chuck key, there's a little, it's already installed for you, the little bracket that holds the key. Just place it right there. Uh, that way you don't lose it. Let's go to the other side. For the lamp, it clearly states in the instructions that there is no bulb that comes with the packaging and you do not want to use a bulb that is greater than 40 watts. So if you look at your lights on the bottom portion of the base it should tell you the wattage this one is 13 so should be good enough all right 
I'm gonna plug this thing in here. I can already see a laser coming from somewhere. There it is. That's where the laser's at. That is a far reach. It hits the back side of the wall here, so we're gonna have to probably fix that up. Line all this up. See if the light works. It does. Get that position to where you want it. If you decide to use the light. What the laser is going to help me do right now is get this thing lined up so that the table is right in the middle. And as we didn't tighten the top portion earlier, I want to make sure that this is right where it needs to be. Topped out. We're gonna try to move this thing in order to make this thing work. So I want that laser in the middle of the table. Make sure you're not using your hand when you turn this thing on, I guess. Let's see. Let's get a block piece right here. Get the camera up a little bit closer so you guys see what I'm doing. It may not be the easiest thing to see on the camera, but it's very visible to the eye. We have the laser in the middle right here. When this goes down, we are going to have to get a bit for this. Let's lower this down so we can fit a bit. I'm going to turn it counterclockwise in order to open the teeth up. It's all the wood pieces, wood shavings that are coming off from when I was using the block to hit it in, nothing to worry about with that. I'll get this thing nice and tight right where it needs to be. Oops. No idea why I brought that wrench out. Probably gonna remove this for the time being, this other handle here. I do not need it for right now. But I do wanna make sure that that lines up. Both of them together. And now I can tighten this up with a five millimeter wrench. should be good to go. 
see how it works. So again, I don't know if you can really see it on the camera, but the laser is very visible. Um, turn that light on, it fades away, obviously. Um, but you do have, let me see, I'm gonna grab a pencil here. I'm gonna make a random hole in this random circle with an X on it, on this piece of wood, and let's see how accurate we are with the laser. My piece moved a little bit. So let's try it again. X. Line it up. Hold it down tight this time. Pretty accurate. A couple things I noticed is it has some wobbling. It's not that loud. It's actually not loud at all. I definitely hear myself talking at normal, normal voice here. Clean up those shavings in a bit. The only thing that I don't like about it right now, and that is because it's something I need to do, and it's not the machine itself, is that it has a little bit of wobble to it. So a couple things you could do with this is you could design a base for it and bolt that base into the ground or into the floor, or you can bolt it straight into the plywood that I have as my flooring right now. So a couple different options you can do at this point right now. I'm not going to bolt it because I'm not 100% certain if I do want to keep the drill press here or move it in a different location. All right, guys, that is everything out of the box. Let's see what time it is. And this was taking our time and going over the instructions slowly. So um, it is now 8.03. Move that up so you can see. It is 8.03 right now. So this took us about an hour and a half uh, going through it slowly and making sure we're doing everything right, plus some hiccups in the road. Uh, not quite sure whether or not things were supposed to be the way they were, and we figured them out. Um, watching this video, hopefully you get a better grasp on installing this, and it'll go by a lot faster for you. Um, but again, I haven't watched any videos uh, regarding installation of this product itself and I just went through the instructions and put it together so hopefully by doing this it gives you a better aspect of putting it together and what needs to be done um, well I do appreciate you guys watching and take care and we'll see you on the next one